We are Man vs. Meeple, and for the weeks of October 24th and October 31st, this is What's Next. Welcome back to the bi-weekly show called What's Next, where David and I cover all of the games coming to your friendly local gaming store. We will cover our top five most anticipated Indeed. games, as well as show you a ticker at the bottom of all the other games coming out in the next two weeks. There's a lot coming out these two weeks, and and, and very soon, all these Essen titles are starting to hit. November's going to be crazy, guys. Indeed. So, what do we have for number five, David? So, at number five this week, we have Tiny Epic Western, and I have to admit... This is my first Tiny Epic game. I have not played any That's of the other ones. surprising. There's I, so I know. many of them. I, I haven't played any of the other ones, but I have to say, I really enjoy this one. First of all, it is a beautiful little game. It is, And yeah. like the name implies, there is a lot of game in this little box. It's a worker placement game, mm -hmm. and the twist, I, th I think, is that the places that you go, you're basically going around this sort of like little western town sure. to different locations. But if you go there, like any good western town, there's mm -hmm. going to be some dueling. So if we're battling over a spot, you can push your luck and go for sort of a juicier version of a spot. Right. Uh, if you do, though, someone else can go to that location as well, and then you end up dueling. And if, you, if you're if you on the short end of the stick, uh -huh. you're not going to get your resources. Right. You know, you, you, you can't push your luck too much. And the dueling dice are really cool in this the game, The dueling too. dice are these little bullets that you, that you spin, and there's some obviously some mitigation there. You're going to use some poker hands okay. and some poker cards to court, sort of... Uh, increase your die rolls. You can use some resources that you're collecting to mitigate the dice and re-roll them and things like that. Uh, but it's really a nice little worker placement game. You're also acquiring some cards to really build out sort of like your own worker spots that you can go to. Uh -huh. So like I said, a lot of game, little box. I really highly recommend this one. Awesome. I have number four, and it is Kanagawa. Kanagawa. By Bruno Katala. Yes. It is a two to four player game, plays in about 45 minutes for ages 10 and up. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. Very oh. reminiscent of an old video game that I loved called I know Okami. It. Yep. <laughs> Okami, great game. It is a set collection game and a card drafting style game. Comes with this beautiful, beautiful bamboo board. I know, it's so looks incredible. looks really cool. So uh, you are a painter in a paint studio who's trying to build out your studio and build paintings. You're painting seasons and buildings and animals. Uh, first person to get certain tiles, like whoever has the most animals, whoever has the most buildings in their in their tableau. Beautiful game. And we just got this. I have to yeah. say, I'm a I'm a Bruno Fan? junkie. Yeah, I, sure. I love his stuff. So I can't. I haven't played it yet, but I cannot wait to it's a small sit down box and play game. this. It's right there. Yeah. Um. So that is number four, David. What do you have for number three? Number three, not so small box. No. It's Colony. Yeah. Uh, by Bezier Games. This game is a one to four player. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a deck builder. It might look like a deck it's builder. It's a dice pooling game. It's a dice drafting game. Sure. Uh, more than anything, in my opinion, it is a machine building game. Yeah, You're absolutely. building a tableau, acquiring cards from the table that are basically locations in this sort of post-apocalyptic world that you're trying to rebuild. Okay. And then you use the dice as the resources to sort of power these locations. Mm -hmm. So, and another cool feature, uh, one of the really cool starting uh, cards you have is to some one that upgrades your other cards. Yeah. So you can upgrade them, flip them over, and then you get even more powerful uses for the dice. And all the cards in the game are upgradable. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, the, and the dice, you know, you hear dice and a lot of people go, meh. Uh, mm -hmm. Too much luck. This has so much dice mitigation. Ton, I mean, it does. Yeah. It, you, you're really strategically using this dice. You collect them, you can manipulate them, and then put them on the cards, power them just how you need. And it's really a great, great game. There's also a nice scalability, too. You can play a game that's very low interaction, mm -hmm. which I generally like, but I have to admit... I think this game benefits from a little bit more interaction. Yeah. So you can go up. And there's some pretty nasty cards. There are yeah. in, the, in the high interaction version. Yeah. But I think it's really where the game sings. Yeah. And there's defenses too. Yes. In the game. Yes. So. Uh, number two is a game that I was looking forward to right before S. And actually, all the way back to Gen Con, it was originally called Domix, and now it's called Dream Home, and it's by Asmodee and Rebel Games. You are a person who is building your home. It's a 12 round game. The 12 rounds are represented by the 12 rooms in your home. It's a card drafting game. Each turn, players will be drafting both rooms and interior decor yeah. for their homes and building out their dream home. Beautiful, beautiful artwork in this oh, game. I know. This thing reminds me so much. I've said it before. It's like an even mix between The Sims, if mm -hmm. you're familiar with that, 
and like a Pixar movie. I mean, yeah. you look at that, that almost looks like the house from Toy Story right doesn't there. It? <laughs> doesn't it? It's two to four players, 30 minutes, and it plays seven and up, so it skews to all age ranges. And it's got the most incredible tiebreaker oh, yeah. that I think we've ever played in a game, right? Yeah, we've talked about it. We did a review on it, and we sure. talked about it. The tiebreaker, you're looking through your house for as many children as you can find. And it really... The first few times we played, we didn't even see the children on the cards until we read that <laughs> there was hiding. a tiebreaker. Yeah, they're all hiding. So you see a foot coming out uh, like from under a bed or Absolutely. someone hiding in the laundry. Yeah. So whoever has the most kids wins the tiebreaker. <laughs> it's really, if any game could be described as delightful, uh-huh. then I think Dream Home is one of those. That's for sure. true. Number one is quite possibly one of my favorite series of all times. It's Evolution Climate. It's both a standalone game and an expansion to Evolution. Evolution is a hand management style game in which players will be building out a tableau of creatures in front of them and evolving those creatures to feed themselves in order to get points. Fabulous game, very, very simple to learn, but incredibly complex in the mechanical way that you build out your stuff. This game claims to have over 200,000 permutations oh, I, of creatures that I you can evolve I believe it for into. sure. What's new, though, in Evolution Climate is that it brings weather conditions into the game. So you'll be hiding or burrowing underground yeah. when, it's, when it's cold outside and then wearing fur and whatnot when it gets extremely cold. Yeah, I found that to be a really cool mechanic because yeah. you can... It gives you just another variable in the choices you're making. Absolutely. You can have a bunch of large animals, and then you can do things in the mm-hmm. game to incre- or decrease the heat. So your large animals are fine in the cold. That's while right. While someone else has a bunch of little small animals, and they're having to burrow. And, you know, it's a little more difficult for them. And we also have a review out for this one, guys. So go check it out on Man vs. Meeple. Those are our top five games, David. Yep. Uh, if you guys go to our website and go to the GTS calendar, we have a list of all the games coming out in the weeks of October 24th and October 31st. But that's not it. Nope. We as, have a store to cover, David. As we will be doing every episode, and we did in the first, we're going to be showcasing one of the friendly local game stores out there. Uh, these guys are really important to the industry. We really want to showcase them. If you don't go to your friendly local game store, please get in there and check them out. And this week, we're going to be going all the way to Glen Burnie, <laughs> Maryland, and showcasing games and stuff. Yeah. And this place is one of the premier locations in the Baltimore area. They've got over 7,500 square feet of space, which is That's a large a space. large store. Yeah, it is. They, and we've never been there, obviously, but they yeah. sent us some pictures. And half of this space is event space. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other half, obviously, retail. Both halves are equally well organized and yeah. well kept. I mean, this is a really clean store, which I always appreciate. Yeah. Incredibly well organized. And... Their events, I mean, that that event space is well used. They have over 100 events every month, which boggles my mind. Talk about catering to a large group of of gamers, right? Yeah, just the the sheer amount of effort that it must take to organize all that is pretty significant. So these guys, no wonder they're one of the great locations there in Baltimore, I you know recommend if you if you're in the area get in there. I know Jeremy and I always talk about the fact yeah. that when we're visiting a city, you know, we're those board game nerds that want to go in and find any board game store exactly, we can. Exactly, exactly. So that's one of the reasons why we're wanting to showcase these stores, so that when you're in an area, you can go in and visit them. Yeah, make sure you guys uh, you support your friendly local gaming store. Go there, pre-order the games that are coming out. They will always reserve them for right. you guys. Um, and if you guys want to submit to us yes. your game store, make sure you guys go to our Facebook uh, page, message us, and let us yeah, know. Yeah, private about it. message us. We've already received a few few submissions. More than a few, several. So, so as far, more yeah. and more people see this, please send them in. We'll try to sort through it all and get everyone mentioned in some way, shape, or form. Absolutely. And check back in two weeks, guys. As we said, the S and titles are coming fast and furious. <laughs> oh, you they guys are. want to make sure you guys reserve some of these titles. There are some big headers coming yep. out. So that is what's next, guys. And we are Man versus Meeple, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.